Hauka Hauka, my name is Johnny Bear Contreras. We're here on the San Pasquale Reservation located in uh, Valley Center, California. Um, I'd just like to welcome everybody and what an honor it is to be among these two gentlemen here and all of you out there. Uh, you guys would like to go ahead and introduce yourselves. Sure. Uh, my name is Chegg Lowry. I am of Yurok, Maidu, and Achimawi ancestry from Northern California. And I am very honored uh, to be here, a uh, guest here at Mr. Contreras' uh, home and on ancestral Kumeyaay land. And I'm here to talk about comics. Boom. It's great. I'm Kel Malatin from the Paula tribe. And it is an honor to be here with these two gentlemen and uh, to do this for Comic-Con. Wow! Like, Right? Yeah. Way cool. So this is great. Honored to be here. So uh, we've been having discussion on the sidelines here while getting things set up and just looking at different perspectives in our personal um, journey and getting to this point and where we're able to um, embellish, bring the culture to the forefront uh, using different, uh, shoot, um, using all different sorts of uh, artistic uh, venues uh, from the comics, um, from my field doing sculpture and different types of uh, artistry. Uh, Chegg's doing his uh, version of the different, uh, I'll let you explain that part. Sure, well uh, I'm a graphic novelist. I've written a, a 120 page story called Soldiers Unknown and very honored uh, by the fact that it's uh, published by the Great Oak Press, which was which is owned by the Pichanga tribe here uh, in Temecula, and it was printed by Tribal Print Source, which is owned by the Southern California Chairman's Association. So, uh, and I worked with the really cool artist, Rasan Ekadal. So a lot of the production is all native owned. Uh, I'm a big uh, proponent of us as individual uh, indigenous artists as we honor our cultures and where we come from uh, but using our individual talents to be progressive and share stories and histories and the military history in my family is something that's guided my work uh, for many years and I know Kilma has also done work in that regard Yes, uh, so one of my goals on Tribal Council with Paula was to bring the veterans together and uh, do a documentary, but also to get a veterans group together, and I'm proud to say that it's still going forward, and uh, our documentary aired in 2012 and uh, won an Emmy in 2013, so that was, that was a big surprise, but you know, I thought it was a wonderful addition to our tribal culture, and uh, none of it would be possible without the veterans, so, you know, and I was looking at your comic book, and just amazing, you know, the, the stories that you tell and, and the work that you've done for, for veterans as well, uh, for your family history, but also for our people. And I know it's uh, a great honor to work with Johnny, and you know to be here as a guest uh, because I'm not Kumeyaay, uh, but I really uh, respect the Kumeyaay people, their culture, their language, their history, and what a great thing that Mr. Contreras, uh, as an artist uh, from this area, and I know you've done a lot of sculpture work, and can you share a little bit about that? Where some sure. of your work is located? Yeah, I've uh, I've been fortunate enough to have been doing work now since 96. Uh, one of my first pieces was up in Los Angeles. Uh, actually, I've done a few pieces up there, some pieces here. Um, I did a piece uh, near where you're, where you're located in, for the city of Poway. Uh, I did a piece based on uh, some traditional uh, dances we were doing here uh, called the Ghost Dance. And that piece was, um, it was derived from that narrative, uh, and I, it was nice to have that freedom as an artist. And Poway was exceptional in that way. We're doing public artwork sometimes can be challenging. I've always told other artists, you have to be thick-skinned if you're going to do public artwork, because it is artwork by committee. And, and that's what you know brings me back to what we're doing here with Comic Con. Um, Mike Towery, who's invited us uh, the second year now to do a panel uh, looking at uh, the diversity with Native American um, stories and traditions, um, I, think, I think it's a, it's a great platform for us to launch off into uh, 
lots of different categories and able to really be able to express, you know, kind of what, we, what we've dealt with or, you know, the challenges we've had bringing traditional stories and ideas and presenting it in a contemporary, contemporary way. Um, I was talking to Kilma earlier and we were talking about Pion. Mm. Yeah. Comic-Con is a great medium uh, for advancing Native Americans into the 21st century and um, it's, uh, Pion. So um, in 2015, I launched a concept called Our Games uh, where I wanted to take Native American uh, hand and stick games and uh, digitize them for the first time in history. It had never been done. And uh, for me, it was a great way to preserve our culture, but also expand the reach and uh, get children interested. You see the children, they're always on their phones. They can't put them down. And we're the same way. We're, you know, we're all creatures of uh, habit. And, you know, once we get interacting with that phone, it doesn't really stop. And so for me, putting uh, some traditional native games in a digital format and blending the newest technology with some of the oldest games in history and putting that together for me was pretty magical and Pion was a natural start uh, for me because it's a, a really popular game that we play here in the southwest and you know we were talking about that earlier and yeah. and uh, so just pushing that forward in the 21st century to me was was great. Yeah and, and what's kind of a trip about Pion as well is that it, it was the the premise for the gaming that we have now here in San Diego and throughout the nation um, and it was based on our, in our traditional games when, uh, as I was told, uh, when the creator found us not being uh, productive, uh, bored <laughs> with each other, <laughs> fighting with each other. How can anybody be bored right? with you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so the creator brought down a game to help us learn to work with each other. And at the same time, uh, competition, competitiveness, and you know there there are lots of other uh, parts to the story, but that was a part that always kind of you know stuck out to me, and that we were able to use that to move into something that is that has helped our people prosper. That has given us the foundation to move and build our infrastructures and make things better and stronger. You're talking about class one gaming specifically, how they put in, you know, that those were our original games, and you know there was wagering involved, and we said, hey, that's something we've always been doing. And uh, if we want to host, and you saw it with the Supreme Court decision and with IGRA, you know, they said, hey, if you want to do gaming, you know, you retain that right to do it. And, and it was, it was born out of class one. And that was really my inspiration too, was, you know, I see tribes now doing class two and class three gaming. But for me, you know, how do we capture that narrative too? Hey, class one games are ours, traditionally ours. Let's bring that forward in the 21st century when IGRA was written and when the Supreme Court decision was made in 1988 you know, computers hadn't really evolved to where they are now. So we can True. go back into the law now and look and say, hey, you know, we can digitize these forms and really capture that narrative for ourselves and move it forward uh, just as we've done for class two and class three gaming. So. That's great. And, the, and, that, and the, that little part of a conversation goes to show the complexity of what we often deal with as, as native artists and folks, and when we're asked to, well, how do you express these particular things? How do you go about what's important, <laughs> what's not important, what's not related, what's not connected? You know, um, as a public artist, often when I'm asked to find an idea and to uh, elaborate on something, tell them it's like a dial. You know, there's parts of tradition and timeline that I'll turn back to and try to focus in on a slice of maybe what was going on at that time and then relate it in a contemporary fashion. And to, you know, and we had this conversation earlier about what's respectful or what, what, what's our opinion and how do we go about determining what is going to be said and done and at the same time keeping it respectful. But sometimes we have to get out there on the fringe. Um, sure. And, there's uh, cultural humility in all of our indigenous communities. And I think how that can be uh, translated to people who are outside of uh, native life is that you know, our stories, our histories, our imagery uh, has such spiritual power. And there are disciplines that each of our cultures uh, have inherent in the artistic process. And a lot of that is based on working with your elders, 
working with your, your parents, uh, working with uh, family and community members who are knowledgeable and they help train us and they prepare us and they're the ones that say, okay, we think you're ready. Go forth and create, whether it's basketry or sculpture, mm -hmm. multimedia, uh, video production at this point. And then there is also an element of individual courage. Uh, like you said, uh, Johnny, that as artists, sometimes we gotta t take that leap and we have to be the ones to push the envelope and uh, move the culture forward as best we can. And I think uh, it's such an honor to sit with you both as artists because that tension that's there in our communities and in our cultures, it's always, the way that I was taught, it's always been our artists who work with that tension, who facilitate that tension and move us forward. To me, the artists in our indigenous communities are the ones that envision the healthy uh, pathways that move us forward, that, that connect us or reconnect us. And when I wrote uh, my graphic novel, I thought a lot about sequential art. And you know, the comic book format is based on sequential art but as indigenous artists, we've used sequential art for since time immemorial. True. So do you want to talk a little bit about maybe some of that, whether it was basketry or what type of artwork that you observed and looked, and lo looked at and learned from uh, as a young person? And maybe what do you use today in terms of sequential art to help tell your people's story? Um, well, your words are pretty, you know, powerful with the uh, cultural humility and, and the artist catching the friction for moving things forward. And, and for me, you know, I'll sidestep your question a little bit because I've always come from a different angle. Um, for me, I've always wanted to, you know, and, and again, forgive, but uh, for, forgive the language, but I've always wanted to move beyond turquoise and beads and, mm and casinos and feathers and say, you know, that's our history. That's where we've been, but who are we now? And so for me, like, I've always wanted to push forward and create, you know, a documentary uh, or, you know, a mobile gaming app or a experience in virtual reality or just, you know, how do I push that forward? And, and your, your words are powerful and they speak to me when you talk about catching that friction because, and we had this conversation a little earlier, mm -hmm. uh, Johnny, about how, you know, we, we get those arrows at the back, you know, we get those arrows, yep. you know, uh, sometimes from our, from our culture warriors. And, you know, again, I'm humble enough to say, you know, I respect your viewpoint and I want to always respect our history and our culture. But at the same time, I want to kind of sidestep and, and, and push forward. And, and so to hear you put that so eloquently for me is, um, you know, it's pretty powerful stuff. So thanks, thank you for, for that. I think uh, I replied to an email or a text message to you the other day and I called you the word artist. <laughs> <laughs> but he has that ability, you know, to put it, it to, to kind of slice through things and, um, you know, always searching for the right words. Sometimes it keeps me from expressing myself maybe uh, entirely. But while you, were, while you were speaking to the development and of different... Um, different venues, like we were talking about augmented reality, uh, the AR programs um, and the things to bring into, and, and, and that's certainly, you know, your field, and I'll let you elaborate on that, but what, it, what, it, what, what occurred to me as well is that we've had a lot of uh, dismantling of our peoples. Uh, we've had a lot of dismantling of our infrastructure, lack of infrastructure. We've survived, we've gone through a lot of different, you know, aspects. Um, Many of us grew up, I didn't grow up on the reservation. I grew up in Escondido. I grew up, you know, running around the coast, different things. I came back as a teenager as, um, as the family matured and people started to settle themselves. Um, along with that, so as, as you were talking about traditions and the people being able to hand down and be around a lot of our next generations, and I won't just say younger generation, just our next generation, doesn't have, they don't have their uncles, their aunties, their fathers, their mothers, their extended family there to hand them, you know, the tradition, to hand the tradition over, to speak the words where they can hear, you know, pick up on the vibe of, oh, that's what you mean, or is it okay to do that? Of course it's okay. We were talking about uh, 
getting permission earlier. Yeah. You know, and in in what way do you find permission? And I and I told the story about my uncle Raymond saying the way you do it is tradition. And so that empowered me to be comfortable to move in certain ways. And and I would think and I know that between the literature, you know, the graphic novels, um, dealing into um, these certain subjects where people would say, oh, that's sacred, you can't talk about it. Absolutely, but we need to talk about it. And that's where I see AR, oh man, what you were describing earlier, that being, you know, the, the, the native individual who's isolated, being able to pick up on that and being able to, to hear the, the traditions in, in their own mind and fill it through their own soul, that is, that's powerful to me because otherwise that individual may not pick up on it, may not find it. And then who's, who's missing out? We are as a people, as, as, a, as nations, as, as people all around the world, right? Because, you know, that, that's, you know, and I'll get off my soapbox, but if you want to, uh, if you could tell us a little more about some of the programs you've been dealing with, that'd be great. Well, conceptually, it's about telling our story, um, us telling our story, and, and uh, we have beautiful stories to be told, and, and just as anybody does, we have all the rights to claim and take whatever technology exists now, or even create new technology to tell our stories, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the most powerful way possible. And, and so, you know, f f all, all the companies, all the, you know, the, the big tech companies are moving towards mixed reality, virtual reality, and, and uh, I, I couldn't think of a better medium, you know, this is my opinion, I couldn't think of a better medium to, to create and tell our stories and share with the world. I mean, we've, we've always shared our culture with the world, I mean, in, in different ways. You know, we've welcomed guests, we've welcomed people into our reservations and our homes, and you know, we've been happy and proud to talk about that sort of stuff. But um, um, going back to, to what you said about getting permission, right? It's, it's um, w w at, at a certain point, we have to take that ball and run with it. I mean, it's, it's, it's been involved, we, we know it, and, and at some point it becomes ours, and we're the holders of it, and it's up to us, it's incumbent on us to hold that slice of the pie or hold that ball and carry it forward in our own way. And, uh, and so, you know, through sculptures and, and, and uh, books, and, and for me, the technology side, I mean, you guys are, right in the hero category for me because <laughs> you're living and breathing and creating our reality now and you're the ones leaving things behind for future generations to say hey what were the Native Americans up to in 2020 <laughs> you know and you guys are the ones leaving those relics behind I mean to a certain extent me but also you guys and and that's that's our that's our job you know we're not frozen in time we got to get out of the history books we've got to climb out of the history books and say hey this is where we are in 2020 you know we're we're writers and we're sculptors we're artists we're designers we're creators we're tech people we're futurists and and in a way it's our responsibility and if we don't do it you know shame on us for letting us die in the history books oh exactly i appreciate those uh what you said that's very powerful um, I think, like, if we look at what's going on today, right now in this country, in terms of uh, they're literally taking down statues, right? Right today, uh, Sutter in Sacramento, uh, Columbus, uh, are, so right now in this country, there are statues being taken down. Those are uh, images uh, of uh, genocide. They represent certain uh, times in our history as indigenous people uh, that are painful, uh, that are full of sorrow. The way that I look at it as a indigenous writer and artist, I also view this time as an opportunity to try and re-envision what those spaces, uh, what can go into those spaces. And I think imagery is very powerful. Who controls the imagery controls the narrative in terms of the telling of history and culture and who people are and what they're about. And for far too long in this country, non-native people have controlled our people's uh, narrative and our people's ability to share and tell who we really are. And I think it's really powerful because although 
Each of us is privileged to come from peoples and places and cultures steeped in tens of thousands of years of history and experience. We also do have the ability as individuals to place our own stamp into that telling of history and culture for future generations. And like you said, we are not a static people. We're not frozen in time. The comic book format or augmented reality, sculpture work in the middle of a park place, in the middle of a city square, we can do that as Native people. It's our right to do that as Native people. And I think that having the San Diego Comic Con on ancestral Kumeyaay land, it is their honor to be on your land. And I hope as, you know, again, I'm a guest here, but I hope that the Kumeyaay people continue to push that envelope and continue to be the leaders because you're my mentors. Uh, I look at both of you as, as my heroes and especially Johnny uh, as my leader. I'm in your area. So, and the, the Comic Con is in Kumeyaay uh, territory. And I appreciate people like Mike Towery and others who are connecting us in a good way. And I think there's yeah. just such good power in terms of uh, the comic book format, you know, everybody loves comics. If you don't love comics, there's something wrong, all right? Uh, but if, Johnny, if you can uh, kind of segue into that, like... Yeah, uh, you know, we're, working with Mike, it's been really cool. You know, um, a couple of the first times, went down to San Diego, met with a couple of the other Kumeyaay folks, and he was saying, you know, I grew up here in Penasquitos, which is down the road from us, and you know what Penasquitos is, right? And um, he's like, man, he goes, I grew up learning all this Western stuff, but I never really learned about San Diego native peoples. I'm all, well, you know, we have stories, you know, and, and there's all these different ways to go about things. So we met downtown, uh, actually we met at Balboa Park at the Comic-Con Museum, really nice, neat little place. They were getting it done right before Comic-Con. Um, not so little, but um, the Batman exhibit was really cool. Uh, and we sat and Mike kind of, Mike Towery put down some stories about growing up, not seeing any of these things, not being exposed. Uh, Mike Connolly from Campbell um, told some good, you know, parts of stories, went over a couple of the narratives of uh, the creation story. And I mean, just that, I wish we would have recorded that because that in itself, was kind of a kind of a one of a kind deal and having that conversation, um, but you know I think we've all gone through different stuff growing up in San Diego, in and out, you know, being around different things and and and, you're, and you guys are right, you know, we're not. It, it isn't like things are static with us, you mm -hmm. know. And you know, I didn't ride my you didn't ride your horse over to the house today, <laughs> did you? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, right. You did come up, did you come up the dirt road, <laughs> right? Well, I, I looped around Auntie's uh, place and <laughs> grabbed a couple tamales and... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's, um, I used to laugh up here on the res, we didn't have paved roads for the longest times. A longest time. You and call that paved? <laughs> well, yeah, you did take the paved one. That's for the new visitors, oh, the dirt one. Four wheel drive you know? up there. If people ask, they're like, well, where do you live? I go, you see the oaks? You pass two oaks, then you're going to see a rock. Then you're going to see a smaller <laughs> rock. And then you're going to see, do you live there? No. Then you're going to go around, you know? And honestly, that's kind of part of the way it was for a long time. We've just recently gotten uh, numbers, addresses. <laughs> Second time, actually. They've given given us two different sets of numbers. I was surprised that the GPS actually picked it up because I know things get wonky on the res. You right. know? There you yeah. go, and that's that's technology being put to use right there. That's right? it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and who would have thought that's how we're getting around back and forth? Yeah. You know? Natives with smartphones. Oh man, <laughs> they're learning to use those things too, boy. Yeah. Doing some stuff with them. Now that we got signals out here. Yeah, and that's a whole other, you know, a whole other envelope of, of things, our infrastructure. That's What's it. going on on our infrastructure, you know? Um, recently, we've been working with uh, Alonzo Nunez with Little Fish Comics, located on El Cajon Boulevard in San Diego. Uh, <laughs> and starting to teach some of the basic uh, approaches to developing comics. We've been able to get some of the uh, educators here in San Diego 
uh, to work with them on Zoom um, to go over some of the basics on how to, how to get to the point to where we'll start getting it into some of our more localized classes on the reservation. And we've had a great uh, outpouring of, of people being interested in, and I think, it, I think that's something that's needed, you know? These guys need yeah. to be able to hook up, plug in. He's an educator, got his master's in education. Oh, right? well. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah. You know, uh, I appreciate uh, you saying that, and I would really encourage any young native person who's watching us, uh, I, and if you're interested in any aspect of uh, creating comics, the thing to do is just to, to try. Mm. If, you're, if you want to write, write. And if you want to draw, draw. Keep doing it. Keep doing it every day. And if you can, go online. There's lots of resources online, YouTube, Facebook. There are artists, there are writers out there. There's a lot more resources available to us regardless of culture, in terms of creating comics, mm -hmm. in terms of learning about the process. Uh, if, but if you are a young Native person out there, regardless of where you're from, I really encourage you, tell your stories. You know, it's, it's, that's why we're here yeah. as Indigenous people. And your, your story, what you're dealing with right now, that's what, that's what counts, that's what's important. Yeah. yeah, and there's a need for it too, I mean, you know, calling all talent, all creators, <laughs> artists, right, right. you know, designers, graphic, tech people, you know, if, if, you've, if you've got that calling and you feel that need, you know, f fulfill it and, 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 and follow your heart and your passion because uh, there's a need, you know, going forward into the 21st century, it's on us to create that road. You know, we're, 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 we're whacking the bush, you know, we're going forward and, and, uh, and like, like you said, you know, if, if you've got that skill, uh, I'd say pursue it because there's a need, uh, you know, when, when we're dead and gone, we, we, <laughs> we need the next generation to come up behind us and carry that torch. Oh man, that's for sure. I, di I didn't start off when I was young thinking I was going to be a sculptor or an artist, you know, moving in that way. But, uh, you know, one thing leads to another and I think that's, that's super important is that encouragement. And to understand that those first, those things, the things that you do when you're young and you don't see anyone else doing, that that's you. That's that's your originality. That's a great right? point. That's a great point. Yep. Yeah. And people may say this or that or call you down, call you names, mm. or shoot an arrow in your back. Uh, you know, and you'll feel it. You'll feel the pain. But that's just those are the struggles, right? Like out of mm. every hurting, struggling caterpillar comes this beautiful butterfly, right? We've heard that story and, and that's just it. Like you said, when, you know, when, when you're out there on your own, that's you, that's you finding you. Yep. And, and you, and you might be all by yourself. Hell, you might be 10 miles ahead of everybody else or off to the side, but you're forging your own ground. I mean, that's, those are great words. Oh, man, you know, that's the trippy part sometimes. And people do, um, in our families up here, you know, people don't always see things in the same, same light that you do. Sure. You know, I, you know and, and I think, you know, again, uh, from a cultural perspective, uh, it, it all comes down to the bravery of the individual artist to push that envelope, uh, to hopefully be good mentors, uh, and to continue to uh, create. You know, I was fortunate to be raised in uh, families where we said, you know, Creator put us here to always be busy, to always work, to always develop, to always think and be critical and work with our hands and create art. In a lot of uh, the indigenous cultures that I've learned from and, descent, and the ones that I descend from, there's no native word for the, that, the English word art. Mm. There's no native word because art is not segmented from who we are as people, as everyday people. Mm, art sure. is a part of our life. It's philosophy also. Uh, but something a little bit silly, uh, since this is Comic-Con, is you guys need to share, who are some of your favorite comic book uh, characters and why? <laughs> you, you wanna jump in or you want me to go first? Hit it. Well, admittedly so, I've always, dabbled in the realm of nonfiction, but as I got older 
and my mind needed to escape from you know the realities of nonfiction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I found myself oddly attracted to this Iron Man series, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, for me, because it, again, it's this blend of futuristic technology with helping and serving others, and you know, and and when they came out with the movie. Uh, with with the Iron Man movies, it was just mind blowing to me because I was like, wow, like I feel like I can identify with this guy. You know, he's driving his Audi R8 and he's cruising the Cali <laughs> California it's coast, the car. It's and the he's car. launching and he's strapping on missiles. And I'm like, you know, for me, it was just like <laughs> mind explosion. Wow. So I, I I think I think I'd I'd go uh, on the Iron Man route, I guess. Cool. I guess I, I'd have to kind of go old school a little bit and go with the Silver Surfer. I kind of thought that was, you know, cool. But then coming through, Batman, of course, sure. right? And then um, kind of moving uh, off into Wolverine. And oh. the one movie where it went, kind of went native for it's a dark. minute. Where his girl was, you know, she was northern, right? Yeah. <laughs> she was northern and she went into the whole story about the moon. And, and, I, and I was just kind of like, oh, I like that narrative, that mix. Because, you know, you always wonder where the, where the, where they, I mean, what's your origin? Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's like a traditional thing or just a, a, a it's a thing with me. You guys got Wolverines out here, and <laughs> yeah, and they're they're, they're, kinda... <laughs> they're badass Wolverines. I was I was with some friends up in Montana. I get one climbing up behind us here. <laughs> you might, you keep might. an eye out. Keep the camera Huge that canyon, direction. Huge canyon. <laughs> Big canyon. And, uh, Big canyon. Up in Montana, I happened to be up there, um, North Fork of the Flathead River. And there was a guy giving, uh, it, was, it was a book thing. Um, he was explaining all his research uh, about the Wolverines. And I thought, man, those scenes are incredible, incredible. So I got to go with uh, Wolverine. Cool. And what about you, sir? Oh, well, uh, Batman, of course. Yeah. Uh, Miles Morales as Spider-Man is an awesome new character that really speaks to me. But really old school, I like Sergeant Rock. Mm. From Sergeant DC Rock. DC War Comics, mm. my late grandpa was a sergeant in World War II. So oh, cool. Sergeant Rock and Joe Kubert, the artist, was my favorite uh, Silver Age artist. I mean, he I actually got to meet him at a Comic Con once, and it was wow. really neat, like fanboy, you know. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, telling war stories, uh, I like to. Uh, uh, draw from my own family, my own community's experiences, because as Native people, we've had a lot of uh, members in the United States military, and to honor those stories, and also to help heal from those histories. You know, comic books, I think, are a great venue. Uh, and Kilma, you actually mentioned, you know, that you, your grandfather served at Guadalcanal, mm -hmm, and it was, I would mm -hmm. blew me away, because, and I didn't tell you, but I actually wrote a story Ah. A comic book story about Marines at Guadalcanal because that, oh, wow. I had a couple of friends who fought there too, okay. and uh, so my Soldiers Unknown book was the World War One experience. Uh, my mother's people, the Yurok from up in the North Coast, who were drafted into the United States Army, even though Native people were not U.S. citizens in 1918, 1917, 1918, uh, they weren't citizens until 1924 on paper. Mm. Right, the paper doesn't translate into the full-fledged rights. Right, that's right. But I think the telling of stories helps us get to those full-fledged rights. And I think if you're not native, and if you might be watching this, and if maybe you've wondered, like, well, where are the Native American stories in comics? Where are the Native American stories in film? Well, we're getting there. They're coming. <laughs> yeah, one day at a time. <laughs> one day at a time. Yeah, I had an uncle in Patton's Third, Patton's Third Army that crossed the Rhine. Okay. And I worked at Hewlett Packard back in the day in the 80s. And uh, my supervisor's talking one day, and he was like, I was a, a pilot, got shot down, was in a prison camp. I'm on, no way, you know, we're talking. Yeah. And, and he goes, yeah, he goes, you probably didn't think all that. I go, oh, you know, good guy. And he's all, yeah, I've been through a lot of different things. And he goes, you know, your family? And I go, yeah. Well, I had an uncle. Patton's third cross right. The guy got teared, right, teared, tears, and uh, he's like, they, they freed us. It was, it was a trip. Oh wow! Yeah, it was really, probably one of the first times where that story resonated with somebody because he just and he started asking me about my uncle and how my uncle, you know, survived and he had passed, you know, not in the 
best condition, but you know, that was that. Uh, and we, you, you said something about names. Uh, we were talking about names earlier. Um, and our word for this particular bird is humpachoka asu. Too chilly. Too chilly. Chegamem. Chegamem, mm -hmm. the hummingbird. <laughs> and as in casual conversation, it turned out it's... That's what my name means. Mm -hmm. in, uh, I was named my, by my great-grandmother, oh, uh, cool. who was born in 1898, and who saw her first non-native person in 1904. Oh, wow. That's how recent wow. interaction <laughs> That's has been amongst my mother's people, the Yurok yeah. people up on the Klamath River. Mm. And, uh, and it is very uh, significant because I think a hummingbird is really present in, in Kumeyaay. Mm. I mean, I see a hummingbird all over your people's, uh, every community that I go to. And I always think, oh, there's the messenger. Mm. And, you know, we have messengers uh, in our stories, right? And I'm excited, uh, I think, maybe in the next five, ten years to think of, you know, the stories that will come out, whether it's comic book form or uh, augmented reality, sculpture, multimedia. Let's pull some of those stories out, yeah. you know, uh, some of those, Absolutely. those uh, whether they're animals or creatures or whatever it is, or space aliens. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have them in our, in our people's history. Oh, that's a good point. We do. I mean, you know, they talk about the spirit animal and things. I mean, we've always, we've always had our characters and our stories, and they've always been tied up in nature. And you see them in individuals, right? I mean, as clear as day, you know, we've what got... What are you saying? Ah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, coyote. <laughs> Hot the paw. Hot the <laughs> no, I'm teasing, but no, but uh, that we see them as clear <laughs> as day in the people that we know and love. You know, hey, this mm -hmm. one's like that, and that one's like that, and, you know, shoot, I, I think that that, like, those those mental explosions that, you know, that, that, that come with comic books and, and just pushing into fiction. I mean, I think we've always had that, like you said, maybe the creator gave us these things, you know, to keep us from getting bored or to interact with each other. Or. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been reading this, I've been reading this one book about um, the cognitive revolution and what the next, or evolution is. What's, what's the next evolution? And, you know, and, and part of the, part of the whole narrative is getting critical thought. How do you, how do you, put it in, you know, how do you, how does it work amongst the homo sapiens, you know? How does all this work? Where did we come from? How do we move through? And then I look at, at when I sit down and want to create a piece and wanting to, you know, express something and we, we hear our stories, we know how the stories are, were applied, how they're applied now, you know, and a lot of it is just practical, practical application of story to explain something that may not have been able to have been explained in any other way. So, you know, these things are created. Don't do this, don't do that. This will happen, that'll happen. Or a, char a characteristic of an individual seems like that over there. You know, those things are connected. And you remember, you remember the word and move on and so forth. And, and that's something I've been wrestling with lately in my artwork. Um, I, I proposed a piece not too long ago, and it had to do with our creation story. It wasn't picked up, and, and, and I was really surprised because this is one of my innermost things uh, that I brought out, and it just kind of fell flat. But I think that maybe they didn't see it in the way I did because I didn't have a chance to really go and verbalize Communicate it. Communicate that. Yeah, and as you can tell, I use my hands and other things <laughs> to explain things. And that's hard to put, these hand gestures are really hard to put on paper, right? <laughs> you know? And looking for that app, give me that app, put that out there. And um, it, it, the art creation story and how those stories work in the cognitive world, the real world, and how these things transition, and why we call something, give something a certain description, it, it isn't per se a real deity, it is the idea of what took place and why you remember that particular thing about that story. And, uh, you know, and very much in the natural world, nature itself, that's where my art and my stories come from. Everything behind us, everything around us, below us and above us, you know, those are the things I feel that are represented in my expression in my art. So when I think when I put creation story on there, and it's for a good sized cityscape, I think 
they think I was jumping off into a whole religious perspective. But you know, um, for, for um, uh, lack of a better word, um, my religion is nature. This is mother, you know, when you say mother, I'm connected, dust to dust, those things. It, it is no, and that's, you know, going off on that tangent, but connected to everything around us. And I feel that that was my upbringing, my elders explaining to me, these are the things you're connected to around you. So to do that in a contemporary fashion, through sculpture, through print, through other sorts of, you know, media is like, you know, that's the challenge. That's the challenge. And it's a very unique challenge. And you put it very eloquently, I think, because as Native people, we also have certain responsibilities, right? We have responsibilities to our places, mm -hmm. to everything that we've had since time immemorial, yeah. where that I've uh, been taught. And, uh, but, but again, always going back to the fact that we uh, are also very resilient and adaptable. And new technologies to, to convey those responsibilities, to convey those stories, we can do it. It's okay, in my mind. Mm. You know, that's what I feel. Oh, yeah.